All right, let's see if YouTube is going to work. Freshly installed app. Come on, YouTube, I believe in you. All right, let's see if this works. Should be going live here. All right, I think we are working. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com, and welcome to another live video here on YouTube. Uh, today we're going to talk about getting comfortable saying new words. This is actually a very specific topic, but it's a rather deep one. What? Tsubasa, nice to see you there. Ohayou gozaimasu. All right. <clears throat> All right, I wanted to make this video. Oh, Nils, nice to see you there. I wanted to make this one because uh, we do get lots of questions from people uh, specifically about uh, how can they kind of use vocabulary that they know. This is a slightly different topic than uh, what I covered last week, which is, uh, what did I talk about? What was that? Thursday? Uh, I thought I was just talking about like expanding your vocabulary, simple ways to do this. Uh, but this topic is specifically about knowing the vocabulary and then getting that extra step of working things into conversations. So I want to talk about why that's a little bit difficult uh, and then actually the steps you can use to improve your vocabulary by working these things into the conversation. Now, this is basically a psychological problem uh, after you already know the vocabulary. So this video assumes, I will assume in this video, that you're trying to use something in a conversation that you already know very well, so you don't have any doubts about using that vocabulary. So we'll just put this uh, at the top here. So we assume... So I assume, I think, uh, for people that are, that are having this problem, this is not about learning the vocabulary. This is about applying the vocabulary, working it into conversations. So I assume you know it well. And in fact, you know it well enough to use it confidently and correctly in conversations. Okay? So you've already gone through the process of learning as a first language, or you just know the vocabulary well enough to feel confident using it. Uh, but hopefully this should make sense. Um, this is really for people, again, who already know this. So you can think about this as like the second part of using vocabulary. So the first part uh, is knowing the vocabulary well enough, and that's what we cover in most of the videos that I teach. Uh, where we're talking about learning English as a first language, that's really going to be the fastest way you can learn. And uh, if you struggle because you, you don't understand people or you have doubts about the language, then you need to focus on that, which we talk about in other videos. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time unless people have specific questions about that, but most of the other videos uh, I have on the channel are talking about step one, which is actually learning the vocabulary. Uh, I'll just mention very briefly about this, just in case anyone's uh, wondering at the beginning of the video. So you don't really become fluent by just repeating vocabulary to yourself. You really need to get lots of examples of these things uh, by hearing things in different contexts or hearing them from different speakers, and that will really prepare you, uh, just getting you used to using that vocabulary uh, and to understand it like a native. Because the way to speak is actually to remove the doubts and questions that you have that stop you from speaking, okay? So it's not repeating stuff. You don't get fluent by just saying things to yourself over and over again. You have to feel really confident that you'll speak correctly, and then you speak, all right? So this, the, the first part of this, uh, I'm assuming you already have this ability for the specific vocabulary you want to use. In this video, I wanna talk about kind of part two, which is how to use the vocabulary if you're feeling maybe a little bit worried or you have certain struggles or questions about that. I wanna talk about why this can be uh, a little difficult for the five steps that we're gonna talk about in this video. Uh, for part two, but this is about using the vocabulary in your conversations, okay? So you already know something really well, you don't have any doubts about it, but why you actually struggle, uh, maybe it's a bit more difficult to use these things. Uh, and so 
one thing I'll, I'll talk about very quickly before we get into these steps is why this can be difficult and why I call this a psychology problem. So it's not really about knowing the vocabulary because you already know the vocabulary. But there are a few different, a few different related issues that can stop you from using things in conversations or that can just make the process more difficult. I wanted to use an analogy uh, about how much money you earn, just as an example. So most people have like a comfortable range of the amount of money they like to make or uh, they want to make, and you will, you will kind of naturally go up and down within this natural kind of band or range of, of money. So let's just say uh, you, like the lowest amount you like absolutely must make is, I don't know, like $1,000 a month or something. Uh, and the interesting thing is like most people, like if they get up to like, let's say, um, this is just an example, it doesn't matter what, what the actual numbers are, uh, but let's say it's like $5,000 a month. So just as an example. So if you start with a thousand, as soon as you start, you look at your bank account, if it's getting down here or going below here, then you will work very hard to try to get your bank account back up in this range. Maybe you will cut some expenses or you will do something else, but like once it goes down here, this is where you start to panic. Oh no, I'm like I'm low on money, I need to figure something out, we need to get this number back up into this range. And there, there might be a logical reason for this. Maybe you think like I have this money or I need this amount of money to pay my rent or buy you know whatever, um, but it's still basically like a, just some random number that you pick. You know, it doesn't really matter what it is. And then the same thing, the interesting thing is up here, if people try to, if people try to earn more money, uh, often they will get stuck at a certain level as well. So like the higher level and the lower level can get you stuck as well. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this, it's just an interesting thing because you will find this same level of comfortability with uh, vocabulary as well. And part of the reason is that we get used to just using the same words and phrases again and again because generally we don't like to think. Thinking requires effort and effort requires energy. So we're just like, well, let me just say the same things uh, over and over again. So this is a typical thing. Now, another reason that some people might not consider is what other people will think of your new vocabulary, okay? What other people will think of your new vocabulary. So this is, it could be a deeper psychological thing that many people don't think about, uh, but some people do. You actually could be worried that if I start, like let's say I go to college, all of my friends do not go to college, but I go to college, I start learning more, I don't know, advanced vocabulary. If I start using that vocabulary with my friends, what will they think of me? So these are things that people might think about. And so they can stop you from using the vocabulary. So part of it could be just like laziness uh, or part of it could be like actual worries about using the vocabulary. But if, if this is okay, if you actually feel confident and certain about the vocabulary, then typically it's a psycho uh, like a psychological issue rather than a, like a fluency issue or an issue with the vocabulary itself. Hopefully that makes sense. So before we talk about what these steps are and how you can do this, I just wanna make it clear why we have issues like this. And there could be more. I just want to make like even, even just one or two issues, this should be like a pretty simple uh, thing for people to understand. But there's typically some reason why like we just either feel comfortable, we're kind of lazy, it's harder to work in the vocabulary. Uh, and this is a good phrasal verb for you. I'll just put this up here to work in work in, to work in vocabulary, like to get that new vocabulary into conversations, all right? So the most basic reason people don't do this is because, well, I'm just lazy about it. And, and not like you're like logically thinking about that, but if you're speaking, it's a new thing you want to say, you're not comfortable yet, you're not used to using it, and that's why you won't use it but you could also have maybe fears that stop you from using the vocabulary. So these are steps you can actually use to just help you solve that. So that's what we'll talk about in this video. Uh, again, if you have questions about any of this stuff, uh, we could talk about number one, which I talk about in most videos, 
which is just actually how to learn the vocabulary, but today I really want to focus on this, which is using the vocabulary in your conversations. All right, but before we do that, let me take a look at comments. Let me see. All right, so YouTube, I reinstalled the app, and now comments are working again. So let's see. Nice to see everybody. See over there. Hello from Wisconsin again. Uh, Nils, what part of Wisconsin do you live in? I was in uh, Appleton. Aren't you like near Madison or am I incorrect about that? Finally, I catch you live in the beginning. Yes, welcome to the party. Uh, I did not think I was actually doing a live today, but I found out I was. <laughs> uh, so I checked my schedule and I did in fact have that on the schedule for today. So it should be uh, the lives are this week uh, today, happening right now, if you're watching right now, and then also Thursday, I think. All right. Uh, and I see you there. Hi, everybody. Oh, my God. Found you online, says Elson. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Milton says, I love to use new words, but like you said, we need to know what the word really means with no doubts. Yes. And so a lot of people are very excited to learn new vocabulary. Uh, I'll just make a quick point about this. Often people, they're trying to learn more new words before they actually feel fluent in the vocabulary they already have. Okay, so it's really important if you don't already feel fluent with your current vocabulary, don't try to learn more. I talk about this often, but the basic idea is it's not going to help you speak more fluently by learning more. You will probably understand more, but that really won't help you understand enough to speak fluently because you have to remove the doubts and questions that stop you from speaking. That's how you actually communicate. So that's what I'm talking about here with number one, where you actually feel confident enough to use the vocabulary and then we can talk about how you work that vocabulary into conversations. All uh, right, let's see. Anyone from Brazil here? Yes, I'm sure there are quite a few people necessary. So, uh, repeated use with various contexts is important to be fluent or more fluent while speaking or conversing, right? Well, the point is just you understand the, you understand the vocabulary well enough to feel confident about using it. I, I'd really like to find a simpler way to express this, but if you're not confident, you won't speak. I'll just say that. If you're not confident, you won't speak, all right? And so if you have a doubt about how to say a word, maybe you're worried about the, the actual meaning of it or you're worried about the pronunciation or something else, any worry or any doubt you have, that will stop you from communicating. This as a very simple analogy here. Imagine you have a, a boat uh, and, and like, it's probably not the best analogy. I'll give it very quickly anyway. Uh, but the boat is tied to uh, the dock over here. There are like many ropes that are holding the boat together. And if any of these ropes is still attached, you can't move the boat forward. Okay. And you can think about each of these ropes as a doubt you have. So you could have a doubt about pronunciation, a doubt about grammar, uh, or understanding maybe like if someone has a difficult accent, that could be more difficult for you. There are lots of reasons why you might worry about using conversational, you know, whatever the vocabulary is. It could be any kind of vocabulary uh, or even a word where you're just worrying about maybe you'll say it wrong for whatever reason. So if you have any doubts, so maybe you, you like remove the doubt about pronunciation or grammar or something else, but you're just not quite sure. You're not quite sure about something, whatever that reason is. And if you have anything, that will stop you from using the vocabulary. So this video is about assuming you have no doubt. So there's really nothing stopping you. You know the vocabulary perfectly well. You feel very confident about using it, but you get stuck at this point because either you're just lazy, you're very used to saying one word and not some new word you're trying to use, uh, or maybe you could be worried about what other people will think if you use new vocabulary. There are different reasons for this, but it's more of a psychology problem. So it's just how you, you know, whatever, either your mind, your, uh, again, just the two basic reasons are like fear or laziness. Okay. So you don't feel bad about that. It's just naturally what happens. So really what you need to do is stretch yourself to begin finding like ways to use new vocabulary in conversations. Uh, and doing this, I'll show you how to do this uh, with a couple of steps. But just to make sure people understand, so we are all on the same page here. Hopefully this idea makes sense. 
So yes, you erase the doubts that stop you from speaking, and usually what happens is people are learning languages and they're, they're learning vocabulary, but at the same time, they're, they're getting doubts from teachers or from uh, textbooks or whatever. So you learn something, but you don't really feel confident about using it. And that's the number one reason why people wouldn't say something in a conversation. But if you do feel confident, that's where we talk about these other issues down here. All right, I wanna make this very clear. It's, it's a very uh, specific issue for uh, communication, but this is, again, for people who know a lot, but uh, maybe they're just trying to work in uh, new, like new vocabulary, whatever that is, how to stretch and expand your vocabulary and use that fluently. All right, let's see. I'm from Brazil. Oh, okay, you're also from Brazil. Good to know. All right. Uh, C says, I learned new vocabulary today, which is evade. I found it similar to dodge though. So how do you use it properly, Mr. Andrew? Yes, so that's a good example. So there are different kinds of vocabulary you could, uh, you could learn. I'll mention that briefly as well. So you could learn like something, we'll just say something completely new. Like it's a new grammar point or something. It's just a more advanced thing. You're not like you've not heard of it before. You just, you're just learning it. Uh, or there's something else where you're, so this is like completely new, uh, or this is where you're, you're kind of learning a different way of expressing something that you already know. So if you have a word like dodge, and you're trying to learn a new word like evade, they mean exactly the same thing. And really you, could, you would get more confidence about using that just by getting more examples, and that's what we'll talk about in this video. Um, but in this case, uh, I'll show you how you can do that. But yes, this, so these are kind of two different examples about something. So the vocabulary could be completely new. You're describing a new situation, a new context. Like if I learn about traveling in space and I'm learning vocabulary for that. So that's, that's new vocabulary that I'm not using for anything else, all right? Or I could be learning some vocabulary that's replacing something else. All right. So even like you could have something like it's kind of in the middle where you learn some vocabulary and the meaning is actually a little bit different and you can start making connections and you learn uh, like you might have uh, like different ways of describing someone or something in like a more polite or more casual way. So in that case, the context is actually a little bit different. So I might say like if I go to a, uh, a restaurant and I'm at a like a nice, classy, high quality, expensive restaurant, they will speak with me different. You know, they will say different words uh, than they would if I'm at, you know, McDonald's or whatever. So uh, if I'm in a more casual conversation, like, uh, like, would you like fries with that? Like they might ask me that, like, or but a uh, kind of more ele elevated, elegant, expensive place, they might say like, oh, are you interested in anything else? Or could we, you know, could we give you anything else this evening? So people will say different things. It's about, it's like the same general situation, but the context is slightly different because one is more polite than the other. So you learn these subtle nuances as you, again, learn English as a first language and you're connecting more with different situations and understanding the vocabulary for those situations. But uh, in any of these cases, you're still taking new things and you're trying to work them into your conversations. But yeah, those, that was a, a good point. So it could be something that you already know. In this case, like there's no difference. Like I could evade something or I could dodge something. Uh, but you will, you will typically hear like the slightly different uh, like contexts for something like that. So often you will find vocabulary and you can think about it like if we have the word dodge and evade over here. So a dodge is typically like a quick movement where I'm, I'm getting out of the way of something, all right? So here, like I could be talking about a quick movement uh, where both dodge or evade could also be used. So someone asks me a question, I'm evading the question. I'm dodging the question in the same way. But like, let's say I'm a large, like a military battleship. Uh, in that case, I can't really move very quickly. I can evade something, so I'm trying to move out of the way, but it's a slower process. So typically a large battleship would be evading rather than dodging something. 
All right. So you hear like there, there are times when the vocabulary could be used in the same way. Like I'm dodging, someone throws a, a marker at me. I dodge the marker or I evade the marker. All right. But if I'm talking about some things like uh, typically like a faster, quicker movement, uh, shorter, like shorter spacing, something like that, that would be a dodge. But a longer, wider movement would be more of an evade. Okay. Now people, they, they probably aren't thinking about it that carefully or that, that deeply. But like in the news, you will probably not hear about uh, like dodge and the military at the same time. All right. Also, dodge can have more of a, it's like a, like the quick movement and evade is like, it's more, it doesn't sound like it's, it's like cowardly or whatever. So like if you dodge something that could be saying like, oh, you didn't, like, why didn't you answer the question? Why did you dodge the question? Why didn't you uh, answer the question? So again, you will learn as you get more examples of those things, uh, it's really up here. So helping you understand the specific meaning of dodge rather than evade, all right? And so when you get these different examples, as you see them in context, and that's why it's so important to get lots of examples, okay? So if you, just, if you get a, a dictionary definition of something, you will feel maybe 50% confident or 60% confident. But if you get 10 different examples and you really understand, oh, I, I can see why, I understand why someone said dodge over here, but they said evade over here, okay? So it's a long explanation. Uh, but again, this idea is it's kind of up here for part one, where we really want to feel confident about using the vocabulary. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, let's see. Edin, Edinson says, hi there from Brazil. It's hard to practice English when you don't have a practice partner to do that. Uh, I'll mention this again, just talking about practice because it's related to number one up here. Uh, and that is you don't really practice your English by speaking with other people. I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, uh, but you actually practice, like I just explained before, by getting lots of varied examples. So I call this naturally varied review, but in the same way that you need to get lots of examples and it's varied because if you just get the same example again and again, that's just repetition and it's not helping you understand the vocabulary any better. What you really need is a very strong understanding and that's why when we get a whole bunch of examples like dodge versus evade, then we really feel very strongly and very confident that we know that vocabulary well. Okay, so the goal is, again, number one, this video assumes you're taking some vocabulary that you already know very well. So if you have a doubt about it, like, do I, should I use dodge or evade? That is a doubt, okay? So that would mean you just don't know that vocabulary well enough to use it and you should get more examples of that thing, all right? So I'm trying to lay this out logically for people so they understand kind of what what part or what, what section they are uh, for developing fluency. So again, fluency implies that you know something well enough to use it, but you still might struggle to use it for various psychological reasons. All right. Let's see, Elder says you draw some kind of sinusoid or camel hump. Yes. Uh, so that, that, that was just an example before about like the kind of range where we feel comfortable, we, we typically feel comfortable within a range of doing something, all right? I was just using money as an example because that's a thing that most people deal with, even if you're not learning a new language. All right, uh, let's see. I've improved a lot following Drew's advice. So you'd say like advice, advice uh, to unlock my speaking. Glad to hear it. All right, hello from Brazil. Yeah, lots of people from Brazil. What time is it there? Uh, what time is it here? It is uh, 10.30 on Monday morning in Japan. Khalid says, hi, I'm from Saudi Arabia in the Middle East, but teacher is clearly speaking uh, an idea very like this for me. Yes, I'm, I'm being intentionally uh, clear so people can follow what I'm saying. All right, XDL is back. All right, just back my homeland kind of spring festival, the Chinese New Year. Yes, uh, actually in Nagasaki, we have uh, lanterns that are being put up for the lantern festival. That's uh, early February, I think. Andres says, question about on. The other day you explained that we should think in situations, not rules, and you gave us the calendar example. How about when it's an app 
calendar? Isn't the calendar in a squared box? All right, uh, Andres, that's a good question, and uh, I'll, I'll explain it very simply like this. Uh, often the vocabulary we use, it comes from like older situations, but we still continue to use it. As an example, you might have uh, a radio or even uh, we'll just draw like an old television set. Now, I don't know how old you are, but old televisions, they used to have, we, we, there was no remote control and you would have little dials on the television that you would turn. There would be one dial for the channel, maybe one dial for the volume, and you would, you would turn something on or off or change the channel that way. All right, so that's why you hear people talking about turn the channel. So turn the channel or turn the TV on or off because we're physically turning a button. Now, even though we might have a smartphone, does that fit in there? So you have a smartphone and you're just swiping your finger on that. You swipe something or tap a button. We don't say tap it off. We just say turn it off. Okay. Same idea. But this is why we would have vocabulary where uh, even if we're talking about something being on a certain date, I mean, typically even in an app, you would have uh, like calendar days like this and something would still be happening on a certain date. Okay. So we could have something within a certain time, but typically on a certain date. All right. But again, this is why we would have vocabulary. It seems weird that we would say like turn something even though we're not turning anything but that's how we develop the vocabulary and typically the vocabulary stays even though the situation might change a little bit all right so when you uh, i try to teach people about the history of things like that so they understand why they happen uh, studying phrasal verbs is a great way to learn that as well all right, let's see. Sam says, anyone here who wants to be my partner can learn spoken English. We can talk, express our opinion. Yes, uh, you're welcome to meet each other. Uh, it's certainly fine if you want to do that. But if you really want to get fluent as fast as possible, just get more examples. That's really going to be the fastest way you get fluent. Like if I'm trying to become a professional basketball player, I would love to like practice with a professional coach uh, or someone who can you know, give me lots of examples of how I should be playing the game or playing with really good people uh, rather than people at my level. I want to be going up to a higher level of people uh, and then that, that's going to help me improve much faster. Uh, Pleasant Prairie on the Illinois border, 50 minutes from Chicago, says Nels. Oh, okay. Uh, from Morago, teacher, I want to know how to think in English well. All right, so this video is kind of talking about thinking in English. Uh, and part of that is, again, knowing the vocabulary really well. So what most people do is they're learning English through their native language. And that's why they don't feel confident and they have doubts and questions about the language. And they often still think in their native language. But if you learn English as a first language and you erase the doubts about vocabulary or pronunciation or grammar, then you're thinking like a native. So the whole point of this, like I'm giving you these examples here, um, rather than me giving a definition of something, I want to show you different examples and help you understand the vocabulary like a native, because that's when you think like a native. So when you think like a native, you speak like one. Uh, let's see, Charles again uh, from Spain. Finally be able to watch a live in years. Welcome, Charles. Uh, let's see, uh, Elson says, I understand pretty much everything Drew says, event in speed two, uh, even in speed two, but I was trying to watch Mission Impossible and sometimes there are a lot of words I can't pick. Yes, so I'm speaking differently than how movies and uh, like TV actors or even people, regular natives in everyday life would, would be speaking. And so what we do in a program like Fluent for Life is we take you from understanding what I say to understanding what natives say and actually being able to understand that vocabulary and communicate fluently. All right, let's see. Yes, Brazil, a lot of Brazil over here. Milton, uh, you are totally right. Sometimes we learn a new word and the meaning, but not know how to use it in a phrase and which preposition it goes with. Yes, so again, the, the point is, to know the vocabulary so well that you feel confident about using it. All right, that's, that's like the bare minimum for good communication. And most people do not get to that level and that's why they continue to learn more but struggle to speak. 
All right, uh, let's see. Ed Delido says, teacher, I live in Brazil. Lots, <laughs> lots of people in Brazil over there. I think half of Brazil is on this video right now. Look at that. All right, uh, look at that. Uh, Nikita from Siberia. Wow, it must be cold up there. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, let's see. I remember you also enjoy the movie called The Man from Earth. I have a doubt about these senses, a touch of senility, a scholar of all we spoke about. Yes, uh, I don't I don't really want to take time to explain those, but you can you can Google those things to find them out. Typically, I just want a quick example, like to be senile means you're getting a little bit older and more forgetful. All right. But look for those things. Wow. Rosetta Stone is watching this. Oh, my goodness. I think we are very few, even though you have more than a million followers. Well, I also don't, uh, I don't tell anybody these are happening. <laughs> so YouTube tells people they're happening, uh, and most people just watch them later. They don't watch them live. So yes, a tax evader, that's right. So there, there are different legal definitions for words too. You could be like tax, uh, tax avoidance or tax evasion. Those are two different things. Uh, one of them is legal and the other is not. Uh, Kata says, hello. Nice to see you there. Big, big love from Anurag Kumar. Hello from Rock and Roll City. All right, Juan Carlos. All right, let's get into it then. So uh, as I mentioned, there are a couple of simple steps you can use to start. It's almost like exercising a little bit where you're stretching yourself. You're getting comfortable using vocabulary in your sentences and in your conversations and in your writing. So let's talk about that. Very simply, we're going to go through five things. And you can do this anywhere. You don't need a speaking practice partner really to do these things. Obviously, if you're, if you're trying to speak, usually it means uh, you have some way or some, some situation where you would be speaking. Maybe you're speaking at work or you talk with uh, customers or some people online, however you speak with people. Uh, but in general, you can get pretty comfortable with using vocabulary by yourself. All right. So as I mentioned very quickly, so step number one, this kind of pre-step is really to make sure you know the vocabulary well enough to feel confident about using it. If you have any doubts about the vocabulary, uh, this stuff is, is going to be less, less helpful uh, because you don't really have these problems. The actual problem is up here. Okay. All right. Let me make sure. All right. We're still working over here. All right. Uh, as I mentioned in, uh, what was that? Like two videos ago, I was talking about visualization, which is the first thing I recommend. So I learn a, uh, learn a new word. Uh, let's say I learned the word evade, just was e we had that uh, earlier. If you have any new words you're learning or things that uh, even if you're still stuck up here with them where you really don't feel very confident about it, that's fine. But if you have uh, some new vocabulary you're feeling uncertain about, uh, like the touch of senility. Uh, let's say I hear something like that. Uh, I have like a touch of something like that. So there, there are a couple different pieces of that specific vocabulary. A touch of means a little bit of something, just a, just a touch of something. I don't, I don't want to have like a, a big amount of that. I don't have a really big problem with forgetting things like I'm getting too old. Just, just a touch, just a, just a little touch of senility. So the first thing I want to do is visualize myself using these things. All right, very simple. I could visualize, like even if I feel nervous in the visualization, uh, I'm like if I'm visualizing myself speaking with someone else, all I want to do first is just visualize myself saying these things. Very simple. So I'm, I'm, I could be practicing anything. I could be practicing saying like evade or a touch of senility or any other word or phrase that I'm learning. Uh, but this is before I even start saying anything. So I'm going to make it very easy for my mind just to get used to this. So in the same way we talked about visualization for pronunciation improvement, you can do the same thing with vocabulary. So I'm trying to take things that I know and just, I could, I could take examples that I get from other people or from a textbook or something, it doesn't matter. Uh, Uglish is another good way to get lots of naturally varied review and varied examples of things. And you're just listening to yourself or you could be listening to other people say those things in your mind, okay? So I just want you, whatever the new vocabulary is, you can do this anytime, even if you don't have anyone to speak with. It's just a nice, simple, relaxing way. You're not putting too much pressure on yourself to like, 
like typically the you might know a vocabulary whatever whatever the word is uh, but if you have to stand up on a stage and start saying that thing you will probably feel very nervous about that so again we really want to make sure we take this step by step make it very easy for you to re to recall something to, to use it to feel confident that you'll say it so if you can visualize yourself saying that thing like watching yourself on a movie screen and you actually see wow like you're doing that thing, okay? So you could, you could see yourself doing that thing or you can actually like imagine yourself doing it. Not like you're on a screen, but you imagine yourself doing that. So these are all different ways I can practice saying something in my mind, all right? Just to get my mind used to like, yeah, look at that. Like I'm able to do that kind of thing. I think I told a story uh, years ago about uh, a guy, I forget what book I read this in, but it was a guy who, uh, when he was young, he didn't have much money and like his mother would like to take him shopping and she would look at, you know, nice stores uh, and just do window shopping. This is where you look from the outside of the store through the window at some kind of display. So maybe they have some coats or something like that. And you look at the display of the window and you see the, the nice things that they have. But this mother was always saying, you know, we can't go in there uh, because we don't have any money. So the, the boy kind of learned this lesson about, oh, I guess we don't have much money. Uh, as he got older, though, he realized I need to now train my mind to think the opposite way. And as an example, like he would go to a like a really nice hotel even if he couldn't stay at the hotel yet, he would just sit down in the lobby or he would get some food at the restaurant at that hotel. And he felt like, wow, look at that, like I'm actually here. So it's, it's a, a similar way of, of kind of preparing your mind to accept something. Uh, and we're doing the same thing just with vocabulary. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. See if I uh, missed any comments up here as we continue to do this. Uh, but hopefully this makes sense where we, we really want to just take the vocabulary we already have and we're kind of rehearsing mental rehearsal where we're watching ourselves do this or we're mentally, uh, again, like you're seeing yourself on a movie screen or you're actually imagining yourself doing that. Yeah, both of those are fine. All right, uh, let's see. Wow, nice teaching is good, glad to hear it. All right, you know uh, what we got listening test and university exam, but it was way much formal like news talker that involves many subjects such as military or politics sound really tough. Uh, does that kind of test help? Well, if you're learning specifically that vocabulary for, you know, if like you're, if you need to understand the news, then you should understand that kind of vocabulary. But if you need to have everyday conversations with people, then you need to learn a different kind of speech. But you'll notice it's different English. It's different vocabulary, different way of speaking. Uh, so it just depends on what your, what your focus is. Uh, well, uh, but guys, back uh, here, your video on speaking about such a seemingly simple subject like a pen for 20 minutes is a great way to practice fluency. I certainly would start doing this. Yes. Uh, so even, even this, like it's a pretty small like subtopic, but you could expand it into quite a bit of a lesson, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, but I have a few few videos, I think, I talked about that where I was talking about shoes or a pen or something like that, just showing you that you actually can take something and expand your ability to speak about it. Uh, ah, okay, some other examples over here. So we got serpent versus a snake, uh, a wimp versus a coward merge and combine. Yeah, so again, those are other things where uh, I would recommend you get more examples of them. Uh, and typically we have this like, like I gave the example before, this is called a Venn diagram, a Venn diagram, where we have something like serpent and then snake over here. So this, knowing what the, what the vocabulary means and what would be appropriate for the situation, that's what we get up here. That's why it's so important to spend a lot of time getting many examples about things, hearing them from different speakers, seeing them in different contexts. And this might not always be possible, you know, if you're in a conversation and you hear something, you can always ask the person. Uh, but again, Youglish is a good example. Uh, that's a, a, a site you can use for that. But in Fluent for Life, this is what we do also. We want to give you different uh, examples, different contexts of things, especially with grammar, uh, because that's more difficult typically than uh, even learning vocabulary like this. But when you compare different things like this, uh, chat GBT, Google can also help, like what's the difference or when would we say uh, serpent rather than snake? 
So as an example, uh, a snake is like a particular kind of animal, but a serpent might be something even like a mythical creature like a dragon. Someone might call that a serpent, so like a large snake. So you can think about like uh, serpents and then a snake is like a subcategory of that. All right, so there's sometimes when you can use both or just one or just the other. All right, so if you're looking for things like that, if you have specific words, like that's a, a great thing to ask ChatGPT or Google, uh, like when would you use this word or what is the difference between a serpent or a snake? But I would, I would go deeper, like even having a conversation with ChatGPT about something like that. So if I say, uh, hey, ChatGPT, what's the difference between a snake and a serpent? And they, you know, ChatGPT might explain something and I say, oh, that's interesting, like tell me more about this. Or could you give me examples of when uh, I would say serpent but not snake or the opposite? All right, so again, this is the kind of training you can do. Uh, most of the hard work, <coughs> excuse me, uh, excuse me, most of the hard work is done up here, uh, where if you really get good lessons or you get good examples that help you understand something very well, then it's much easier to work in the vocabulary. But if you still have doubts, I would go back up here. Uh, let's see. All right, I think I'm in the English bottleneck at the moment. What would you like to take some positive advice from I'm in? Thing. I don't know quite if you're offering advice or if you're in the uh, <laughs> if you're looking for help. Hi from France. It's the middle of the night. Oh, there. nice to see you, MC, over there. All right, uh, Alberto says my vocabulary started to improve in the moment I watched movies with legends in English. Well, wow, it sounds like something you're interested in. If you like movies with different legends, then keep watching more of that. Uh, you will also find that that vocabulary can be useful in other subjects. So if you find something you're interested in. Uh, continue to do that there. All right, hopefully this makes sense. Uh, so visualize uh, is the first thing we're going to do. The next thing we're going to actively try to uh, add this vocabulary by writing. So this is going to be writing one, where we just take examples and we just write one simple sentence with that thing in it. And we could do this multiple times uh, with different examples, but just to keep this video moving here, it's actually a pretty simple thing. Uh, where we want to just write the example. So let's say like I saw a giant serpent in the sky. Now we could take an example that we find from somewhere else and just write it the exact same way or we could change the sentence in some way. Uh, let's see. Or let's see I saw a giant serpent, uh, I don't know, in the ocean. All right. So just to change it, ocean or in the sea, this is just to get confident and comfortable of using, comfortable with using the vocabulary. So we just want to try writing those things down. All right, should be pretty simple to understand. All right, next we're going to do writing again. I wanted to break these up into two different things just because I really want to make these steps easy for people to use. So number three, we want to do writing again. But this time, we want to practice responding to someone with the target vocabulary. So you could think about someone else says, like, uh, like, what did you see? Because we want to prepare ourselves for the kinds of things people would use in conversations. And again, just like we're doing this, uh, which we could do with visualization as well, but we're just getting examples. What did you see? So that could be a question from someone else. Uh, and this, it doesn't need to be a question, like a person could say something and we're just responding to that. So it could be an answer or we're just responding. This is just an example of a question and an answer. What did you see? I saw a giant serpent. I saw a giant serpent. I saw a giant serpent. So we could get a couple of different uh, things like this. The only difference here is that one for writing one, we're just trying to practice writing something uh, just so we get used to using it. And then writing two, we're trying to simulate more how we would respond to someone else in a conversation. And you could keep this going. You could imagine like person A says something and you are person B. So you respond uh, and then you're just doing this in writing. You could even have a conversation in this way about that thing. But the point is it will get you used to using these things. Okay. 
So very simple. Any questions about that? Let me check chat here. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Takumi says, hi, I'm just walking and attending your class as a podcast. Glad to hear it. Enjoy the show, or I guess enjoy the, the audio the audio program. <laughs> All right, C so says, I am trying to implement your teaching method in my daily routine, so I always make a list of questions right after I watched a movie uh, so I can imagine the situation. What do you think? Yes, so that's a great way to do it. Anytime you can implement so you can use something, that's what we're talking about, like working these things into our conversations, uh, this is where we would start trying to do that so you can after you watch a movie or if you have questions about some TV show or a podcast or whatever uh, yeah that's a great idea to write things down so writing is also helpful up here as well this is the same kind of thing but uh, this is really focused practice where we just want to get we want to break that psychological uh, barrier or that issue we might have with just feeling uncomfortable or feeling lazy or feeling nervous or whatever about using vocabulary. But remember, it's really, really important up here first to know that vocabulary very well. If you have doubts, go back to the vocabulary itself, get more examples of it, make sure you really understand the vocabulary, when to use it, when you would not use it, those kinds of things. Uh, and again, ChatGPT or Google uh, would be helpful for that. Uh, ChatGPT, is, uh, it's in, it can make mistakes sometimes. Uh, so if you have questions, you can ask, like Google is better just because it can direct you uh, typically to people who already have answers for those things. Uh, but again, like if I go to Google or chat GPT, I will probably get like some interesting, you know, explanation about something like that. All right. Let's see if anything else. Yeah. So chat, chat GPT can be good for learning English, but again, it's a different thing for like learning the language rather than just getting good examples from native speakers. So if I see something that's only text, that's going to help me learn some of the language, but I really need examples from natives so I can hear how the vocabulary sounds from different people in different tenses at different speeds. Um, all of those things contribute to me understanding the language better. Uh, let's see. I've been learning a lot from you, says Edson. Glad to hear it. Uh, Lewis says, a lot of Brazilians in your live. Yes. Yep. Uh, we have a lot, lot of Brazilians follow us. Alberto says, okay, answer that question already. Maria says, hello from Dominican Republic. Nice to see you there, Elena. Nice to see you there. Hello, Drew. When are you going to let me, let's see, know your dad so I will practice a lesson with you? <laughs> Joseph says, uh, when you mean writing, is it writing sentences or paragraphs as a short story? Uh, even just, just something very simple. Make this easy for yourself. Just write uh, even something simple like, I saw a serpent. Or you could make the sentence kind of, and this is something I do like just personally as I'm learning Japanese is make funny sentences that are just, it seems crazier. And I do this with my kids as well. So instead of I saw a serpent, like I ate, I ate a serpent. So I can imagine myself like, ah, like look at this giant snake that I'm, I'm about to eat. All right. Now a serpent, it doesn't necessarily uh, need to be giant, but I'm just, again, visualizing it that way. So I start using it more confidently in my conversations. Okay. So keep it simple. If you want to write more, that's fine. You could write a whole story about something. Uh, but the point is just to use it in your writing because that's really the first step to feeling confident about saying something. And even really simpler than that is just to imagine without even doing anything. You just close your eyes, imagine all of this. So I just want to practice writing it down. I'm saying these things as I write them. I could be saying them in my mind or saying them out loud, uh, but that's going to help me feel more confident about using them. That's why I've really got kind of these two separate steps here uh, for two and three. All right, uh, now number four, now we should be feeling quite confident about using these things in conversations and this is where we start speaking. Uh, and at this point, I really want to look for ways to force this vocabulary into conversations. So I will ask people like, uh, like, hey, like, you know, I had a pet serpent when I was a kid. 
So like people might not be asking me about a particular vocabulary, but I will force this vocabulary into conversations. <laughs> and I will even explain that to people. I just say, oh, I heard this new word and now I'm using it uh, often or using it a lot. You will see this with kids too. Uh, I think there's actually a video on YouTube. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a kid who's using the word actually. If you search like actually, actually kid, that should come up. Actually, let me see if that, if that comes up. I'm just gonna look for that myself here. That was years ago, but it should be available still. Yeah, oh no, no, the word is apparently. <laughs> Appar make sure this fits over here. Apparently. <laughs> So it's like a word that this kid learned recently or something, but he's just using a lot uh, over and over again. Apparently this, apparently that, apparently this, you know. Uh, but it's a funny video, so if you look for not actually, apparently. Uh, but you will find videos of, of like kids, especially if you watch kids talking about that. Uh, as I talked about in, I think, my last video, looking for kids. So if you search video examples of something rather than just like people talking about something, kids talking about something. So kids talking about snakes or kids talking about something, you will see simpler, easier examples of native speakers. It's just kids, but it's still native speakers talking about stuff. And then you can go up to higher levels. So I, I would do that. Like if I'm looking for information about how to say something, so kids talking about gardening and then adults talking about gardening. Okay, so this is, uh, it's a funny video where this kid is just saying apparently uh, again and again. <laughs> Uh, but you can do this in your conversations, and so we want to try to force conversations, uh, or not necessarily conversations, but this is how we uh, work in new vocabulary. So it's, it's more difficult for you to try to be prepared and wait for someone else to talk about something. So if, my, if I'm learning a word about like the word serpent or dodge or evade, uh, I, I want to find ways to, to do that. That's, that's part of this like simulation process up here. So once we've done this, we can think about ways that we might use vocabulary in conversations. How would we work something in to a conversation? So I could start a conversation and begin with, oh, I saw uh, an interesting movie about serpent. I saw an interesting movie about serpents, or uh, and I, I could just make something up, just like a I could I'm not lying, but just like a friend a friend of mine wants a pet serpent, as an example. All right, a friend of mine wants to. So you're you're looking for ways to start conversations, or because if you can control that, it's much easier for you to practice those things, and that will get you uh, much closer to feeling confident and comfortable with the, with a new vocabulary. All right, so you notice the actual speaking is the last thing we do. Number five up here is really just to celebrate. I want you to feel very proud and happy that you used vocabulary. Don't ignore this step. Don't evade it, okay? Don't dodge this step. You should be doing this thing, and you should feel good when you say something. Even if you don't say it perfectly, don't worry about that. Ideally, you would. Uh, but if you don't, just be happy. Yeah, I, I use that vocabulary. So me, as an example, uh, just thinking about something for, like I, I went through all this when I was learning some new grammar point in Japanese. Uh, what's an example recently? Like, like made versus made ni. And so like for a long time, I was, I was, I was just confused about it, like do I use them correctly? So I want to visualize myself saying it. I want to get examples, write them down, make sure I understand what's a good way to use it. And then I start speaking. I look for ways uh, to use the vocabulary, okay? And then after I do it, I feel great, yeah, nice work, I did it, okay? And so all of this will come together and slowly, actually it can happen pretty quickly, uh, but you will feel much more confident about using the vocabulary if you go through these steps, all right? 
So this really should cover everything, like everything you would need to, to speak fluently, from learning, uh, not knowing the vocabulary at all, to feeling comfortable and confident saying something in a conversation. Uh, most of my videos talk about part one up here, but I thought this would be helpful for people, especially if you're learning new vocabulary and you want to just use more interesting things in your conversations or say something different than you usually do. So all those examples that we got so far in this video are great, but this is how you would apply that. Okay. Let me know if we have any questions. Uh, I'll go back and check chat again, but this really should be a pretty simple process. The point is to, you're almost tricking your mind into feeling confident about something so that when you actually do speak, uh, you really don't feel nervous at all. All right. Let me see if anybody had any questions. Let's see. Uh, all right, the problem learning through movies is there are bad words. Yeah, I don't know what you mean by that, but you mean like cur curse words or whatever? Uh, but yes, like quote unquote bad words, uh, yes, a part of natural speech. It's interesting because a lot of people actually like learning those words first in a, <laughs> in a different language. I remember Japanese kids, when I came to Japan, they were asking me like, oh, like, what, like tell us all the dirty words, you know. Uh, Move says you're a good teacher. Well, I try. The point is to make the language understandable so you feel confident about using it. All right, Bruno says, I uh, drew, uh, can you believe it? I'm in a live concert, but your class is way more interesting. <laughs> What's the concert? Hopefully you're like a, like a rock concert or you're listening to some piano music or something. I don't know what I'm uh, more entertaining than, but that's interesting. XD again, I've learned a bunch of black slangs quite different from its original meanings. Yeah, well, that's, what, that's really what slang is. Also, a way to learn spoken English. Uh, it's cool, isn't it? Uh, it's cool. Yeah, well, you would say, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, slang is useful. Uh, slang is what connects you as a, uh, like a member of a particular group because that group uses that vocabulary. All right, Alberto Drew has a good tone of voice with his pronunciation, uh, and his pronunciation is crystal clean. Yes, you would say crystal clear, but very good, crystal clear. So crystal, if you think about like holding a crystal glass, you can see through it, so it's crystal clear. You can see through it. Uh, it's very easy to see through, so it's easy to understand. See uh, again, as uh, actually, as a matter of fact, yes, you can use those as well. Apparently... Uh, you're following what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to raise my 15-month-old toddler bilingual. I address to him in English and describe what I'm doing around in English only. What else should I do? See one day to talk me back. Well, I would get more examples than yourself, uh, especially correct examples for kids are really important. Like little kids, have them watch uh, the same things that native kids would be watching. So like Coco Melon music videos or whatever so songs for kids shows for kids that will help kids especially watch like old stuff like i recommend that more than newer newer content um, but you can certainly find lots of good music right on youtube to do that uh, and anything where you're learning like frederick will help you with that as well you can get that in the link uh, in the description below this video uh, and yeah, just get lots of good examples. And, and I mean, as, as a parent, the most important thing you can do is, is learn with your child. So a lot of parents in Japan, as an example, they just tell their child, hey, you should learn English. And the child is like, why don't you learn English? <laughs> uh, and so like me, like I'm telling my kids, hey, you need to learn English and learn Japanese. And I show them like I'm you know, like learning Japanese and I write Japanese and things like that in front of them so that they see I'm not being a hypocrite, you know, because kids are very smart like that. Um, so a, like a child, like your child is pretty young, uh, less than two years old, but those are important times to uh, listen to that music or those more basic sounds. So just make sure it's correct examples of things. Uh, <clears throat> Milt says, I thought a serpent was a fancy way to say snake. Well, uh, again, get more examples. Go, go deeper into it. I don't want to make this like the serpent video. <laughs> Uh, but you, you will get, and, and again, when you, when you answer questions, it's like, I thought this, but it's actually this, that's where we're up here, where we're really trying to understand vocabulary very well. 
and even natives will continue this process. So you might know, like you hear a serpent and then you hear it in a different way and you think, wow, that's an, I didn't know about that or that's a new usage for me. And so you continue to learn these things and you continue to deepen your understanding and that's what enables you to speak more confidently and fluently. All right, Nils, welcome back. Among Us episode says, you are the best teacher in the world. I appreciate your job. Thank you so much. I learned listening from your videos and your lessons more clearly. Glad to hear it. I don't know about the best teacher in the world, but uh, if you find someone better, let me know. I'd like to learn from that person. If a serpent entered your house, it's a bad omen. Yes, it could be. Or even just a regular, a regular little sneak. Uh, Silvana says, I'm very grateful to you, perfect professor, teacher, eh, eh, eh. yes, yes, I'm not a, not a professor, I don't call myself a professor, I'm not a professor. Joseph says, after doing that to learn a new word, do I have to go over it again, again, from time to time? Yeah, typically, uh, if, you, if you learn something and you've gotten many examples, if you don't review it ever, then you could forget the vocabulary, but if you know it really well, like me, uh, there's lots of English that I don't use because I don't live in the United States. But if I go back, I would uh, the vocabulary would come back to me very quickly. So yeah, if you if you know the vocabulary well enough, you should probably remember it without repeating it. But uh, I'm not suggesting you like look at flashcards every day. Uh, you really should be just getting lots of varied examples of things to help you understand them very well. And you should usually feel a kind of aha moment in your mind when you know something really well. When you really understand it, you think, ah, like now I got it, and I will remember that forever, you know. Uh, XD again, uh, somehow I just, uh, see, so you'd say, I'm just wondering why American and British talk the same in different words and senses. Culture difference, so interesting. Yes, well, it's different places, and we speak differently. <laughs> So there you go. Uh, same thing in, in any place. I mean, even Japan has different ways of speaking. The uh, United States has different ways of speaking within the different areas. And even older people and younger people speak differently. So that's part of the language, part of life. Raphael says, in Japanese schools, are computer labs used to practice English? Uh, yeah, there could be some people that do that, I think. Um, and, or some people use like apps or something like that. They do. What technology is good for learning English? Uh, like just the technology that's already available. Getting lots of YouTube is a really great way to learn, but I recommend you spend more time learning with real native examples rather than lesson videos. So you need to find vocabulary uh, that natives are saying and getting different examples of that so that you can understand what vocabulary really means by getting different examples. So as an example, for me, learning Japanese, as I'm learning uh, kanji, so kanji is like the written Chinese characters that now are part of Japanese written language. Uh, if, I, if I try to just get a translation of something, like I learn like just like one kanji and try to understand what that means, it's like, uh, okay, I could get an English definition of that or a translation, but it's better for me to try hearing that same kanji in in different contexts or seeing it in different words and after I do that oh look at that I understand I get the kind of core meaning of that vocabulary as I learn it uh, so this is the same thing you develop when you're learning English as a first language rather than trying to learn it through your native language um, and so it's the the technology is not so important it's more how do you get examples of stuff and I have not found an app really that helps, and there could be something available, I just don't know, um, that's, that's helping you do that. But I have, it's, most of the apps, are they look pretty similar and function in the same way where they're just giving you uh, like translations of things and helping you memorize the vocabulary, I guess. Uh, but they're not really helping you learn the vocabulary. I mean, it, native English speakers are not using apps to learn new vocabulary, unless it's you know studying for, I don't know, some test or something like that. But even that, like that's usually not a very good way to learn the vocabulary. Uh, so I would look for real examples. That's why we have videos in Fluent for Life because we want people to see actual natives and see like physical moving examples of vocabulary, so you understand it the same way a native does. That's how you start thinking in English and speaking in English. All right. All right, looks like maybe we got to 
Look at that. Gather, collect, summon. Yeah, so those, like, summon would be a, a, that's a different thing than gather and collect. So if I want to, if I'm, like, gathering, you know, acorns in the forest or whatever, or I could be collecting them, remember that there are going to be times where we, where we use something. Like, if I'm gathering something, uh, I might gather something and then I'm going to use it for something. Like if I gather some some seeds in a uh, in a forest and then I and then I eat them. Uh, but if I'm collecting something, I could be collecting in the same way where I'm collecting some seeds to eat them. But I could be collecting something to keep that thing as well. So gather gather typically is like just the meaning of of, of putting something together. But uh, collecting could be putting something together and keeping that thing at the same time. Like if I collect stamps. So people who collect uh, Pokemon cards or p collect, you know, baseball cards or something like that. So we don't talk about gathering baseball cards because the point is not just to put them together. We want to, like, keep those things and display them or put them in a book or something like that. So these are the slight differences in the vocabulary as you learn them uh, where you start thinking, oh, like, again, up here, now I have a stronger understanding of what that word means. Okay. So then you know, know, like, oh, okay, I don't, like, people don't talk about, like, gathering sports cards. They talk about collecting sports cards because the, the more important idea is keeping it, not just, like, pulling them towards you or, or, or putting them together. Uh, and I think the other word you have was summon, uh, and that's also a different thing where you're, like, calling something to you. Like, I summon my, my child, like, hey, come over here. I'm summoning them. So I could gather a group of people by summoning them, but those are two different ideas. One is like the calling of things, and the other is actually like having them be in the same place, if that makes sense. All right, uh, but I think, hello to Teacher Drew, says Bridget, nice to see you there, and uh, Ezeldin, and a nice thanks. All right, look at that. I think we got through everybody. Fantastic. All right, uh, I'll go through a very quick recap. If you have any final questions, let me know. But the basic idea here <coughs> is we have these two general periods of learning, and they could overlap a little bit, but I, I wanted to put this in some steps to make it a little bit easier for people to understand this. But the most important thing, the foundation, is really understanding the vocabulary. And you know you understand when you don't have any doubts. So if you feel confident about saying something, then you can move on to step two, which is how do we integrate new vocabulary? How do we apply new vocabulary? How do we use new vocabulary in our sentences? Okay? And so these are the steps for doing that. I recommend making this very easy for yourself because people are lazy. You know, I know we get lazy sometimes and we're like, oh, I'm like, I'm used to saying this same thing. I know I say it correctly. It's very easy. There's a little bit of risk involved when people try to do something new. And so that's why these steps here should make it easier for you to use these things, to begin applying them in your conversations. But it also assumes you already feel confident that you would say it correctly. So if you don't have any doubts, just be, uh, visualize something, try writing it. You could write just simple sentences, but also have like a, a response to someone else. So how you would anticipate someone else saying something in a conversation. And that's when you can start speaking, when you actually feel, okay, I have this new vocabulary. Today I'm going to talk with my friends and I'm going to look for a way to introduce this vocabulary into the conversation. I could ask them a question about it. I could make up a story about it just to use the vocabulary. Or I could even say, all right, uh, I, I need your help. I'm trying to like, integrate some new vocabulary into my into my vocabulary, my like active vocabulary. Uh, so I'm going to say this word a lot. <laughs> and like you could actually ask the other person like, hey, I want to see how many times we can use this vocabulary and they will like turn it into a game with you and start using it even more. So if you're not feeling nervous about it, you can be confident saying, hey, like I learned this cool word, I want to use it more. They will play the game with you, okay? And then obviously, uh, celebrate. You should feel confident when you do that thing. When you use the vocabulary, yes, I did it. Even if you don't say that out loud in your mind, take a moment and congratulate yourself for using the new word or phrase. All right. Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, these are the kinds of things that we do in 
uh, Fluent for Life, where we're really trying to help you understand the vocabulary, and then you can apply these same steps to start using things. We also teach a whole bunch of ways for people to meet native English speakers. If you don't know how to do that, we show people how to do that the native way, uh, because lots of speakers are, again, they do the typical kinds of things where they're looking for other learners to practice with, uh, or they're going to English language learning forums, and these things are helpful, but they're not as helpful as actually practicing with natives. Uh, and so once you feel confident, you should be feeling confident first, but then we show you how to go out and use the vocabulary with natives uh, in the program. So if you'd like help with that, you can click on the link in the description below this video and learn more. All right, uh, last couple of questions here, XD again, uh, for someone here who wanna learn English as a second one and wanna translate, don't do it. <laughs> Yes, I think probably most people who are here are probably not trying to learn English as a second language, but you never know. Uh, as for Chinesey, Chinesey Fu, I want to say the word cool and the Chinese word is niu bi, which means the bum of a cow. <laughs> Yes, I would imagine I've never tried to study Chinese. I know some of the characters because, as I mentioned, those are also in Japanese. Uh, but yes, if I'm trying to learn Chinese, I would probably want to get lots of examples and learn Chinese as a first language and make sure I'm uh, really pronouncing things well because you do have these different tones in Chinese uh, that are not in other languages. All right. Uh, if bad good egg refers to a person, may I also use a spoiled, naughty, good-looking egg? Also. Well, we wouldn't talk. Well, I mean, it, you, you could actually talk about like a spoiled, a spoiled egg, meaning like the egg is old and you wouldn't want to eat that thing. That's for any kind of old food. Uh, but we wouldn't talk about like a naughty or good-looking egg. Like bad egg, you have to think about the origin of vocabulary. So if something is coming from, like we look at like, oh, that's like a good thing or a bad thing, it might just come from that. Uh, that's where we get the, the expression. Um, and so in that case, you could jokingly say, oh, that's like a naughty egg, but people probably wouldn't understand that reference because they are used to, and that's, that's kind of what this is talking about as well. Like you introduce new vocabulary, people begin using it, they all get comfortable using it, and you can play with that vocabulary a little bit. Um, but if you say something that nobody has ever heard of and it doesn't sound like it would fit, like if I just randomly say, like, oh, that's a naughty egg over there, that people will, especially if I'm like a, not a native speaker, they will, they will think, what is he talking about? But if you're talking about in a conversation, you're talking about good egg, bad egg, and I say, oh, well, that, that's like a naughty egg. In that way, you're, you're connecting that in the same conversation at the same time, and so you could do that. So you have to be careful about how you're using vocabulary because you want to make sure people understand what we're saying. All right, Wilson says, Teacher Drew, I'm late. <laughs> yes, we're, all, we're almost done. And let's see, Abdul Qadir says, Teacher, we want, uh, we went and learn new words, please. No, don't learn new words. Get to know the vocabulary you already have until you feel confident saying it. I know people always want to learn new words, and this is why most of the YouTube videos about learning English are learning uh, about teaching new vocabulary, because people want new vocabulary. But if you can't already speak fluently, new vocabulary won't help you, okay? So I know the natural thing, that part of this video is talking about the natural laziness we have about using new things, even though that's what everybody wants to learn. <laughs> it's, uh, it, the mind is a, is a funny thing, you know? Uh, yes, so focus on the vocabulary you know, and then get really good at using that by erasing the doubts that you have about that vocabulary. All right, Milton says, thanks for the live. It's great to hear you speak, and you gave us good examples, and I learned that you, if you insecure, so if you are insecure, or if you're insecure about saying a word, maybe you need more examples of it before using it. Yes, that's correct. So, like, the, the conversation is not the time to start using words that you don't feel confident about, okay? I, that's what you're told. Everyone tells you that, like the typical advice is, go out and speak, even if you make mistakes, it's okay. And I think that's bad advice because when we can actually, like why wouldn't you want to know the vocabulary well first? <laughs> It's easy to do because you can do this by yourself. You don't need to wait for, uh, you know, for any, anything like a person to speak with or to be in a particular country or anything. You can do this by yourself. 
especially on YouTube, but just get lots of examples of the target vocabulary. And you should get enough examples that you feel like, ah, now I got it. I really understand what I'm learning and I understand what the vocabulary means and how to pronounce it, how to say it, when is the right time to say it. You can get all the answers to that just by getting lots of examples. So you learned something very important today. Remember that idea. If you don't yet feel confident, don't try to move on to this step where you're using things. Just get more examples. You should really feel confident first. All right, I highly recommend that. Because if you don't do that, you certainly can speak before you're ready, but you will just make yourself feel nervous and bad and, and you will remember less and it will just make the whole experience much worse. You will get bad memories about speaking English rather than knowing the vocabulary really well, then getting into the conversation after you already know and practice it, then you really feel confident about speaking. All right, so take the time. It's easy to do it by yourself, so just do that. Uh, let's see. Yes, unspoiled can also mean like uncovered. Yes, or it could mean like unspoiled, like like people have not been there, like unspoiled jungle. So it's like a natural environment without uh, kind of human contact or human influence. Can I download the vocabulary from your pages for free? I don't understand what you're what you're asking for. If you just want vocabulary lists. Just go find them. Just go to Google and type vocabulary list or go to chat GPT and get vocabulary lists. But those will not help you most likely become a more confident speaker. All right, Tuck says, uh, how many words have to learn per day <clears throat> when who is beginning learner? Uh, it's not about how many words you know, it's how well you know the vocabulary. So I, I would rather learn one new word a day but understand that word really well than try to learn 10 words, but I don't remember them or understand how to use them. So the important thing is to really know the vocabulary well. Then you can speak, all right? So don't worry about the number of words you should learn. The point is to understand the process of how you learn and then apply that to more vocabulary. But you should feel uh, more confident if you're learning the right way. Uh, ever watch Family Guy? Yes, I know that show. Uh, if we can learn some words or sentences from it, it's apparently impressive and kind of help you remember uh, ever want to talk or speak. Funny fact, at least for me. Yeah, uh, Family Guy, I haven't seen that show in a long time, but I remember <laughs> like one, one joke that I remember from that show. There was uh, like the main character, Peter Griffin. Uh, he was talking with his wife. And he said, uh, what did he say? He was like, uh, he's like, my, my father is a great philosopher. My father is a great, my, my grandfather was a great philosopher. <laughs> and his wife, and, you know, they just show these like, okay, we're going to go into the past. And they show him, his grandfather sitting in a, in a chair while his wife, like the, his grandfather's wife is holding a baby and trying to clean the house at the same time. And she says, why don't you get a job? And he says, why? <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me, but yeah, I like I, I studied philosophy in in college, and <laughs> why? <laughs> why don't you get a job? Why? Anyway, I found that funny. <laughs> All right, uh, among us again. Sometimes I am confusing. You would say I am confused uh, for this. Let's see, miss in on. Uh, for example, lucky, unlucky, misunderstanding. Yeah, so I hope you will understand my question. Yes, the point is to get more examples of that uh, rather than me telling you that. Go get more examples, like actual examples. Use chat, GBT, Google. Uh, there's lots of ways to get that. Like give me 10 examples of miss and then something of un or whatever that. Those are called prefixes and suffixes and you get more examples. All right, uh, I think we've covered everybody here. Thank you all for joining me. Hopefully you've learned something. Uh, I really, at least one person uh, got, got the really important idea that you should really feel confident before you speak, all right? Yes, you found that funny because you understand it. Well, again, like the, the point of like a philosopher is like asking people, it's like asking deeper questions about that, but he was just asking, he's just saying why when his wife said, why don't you get a job? So he was being a philosopher. He's like, why? <laughs> My grandfather was a great philosopher. It was something. I don't remember exactly what he said. but Anyway, it was funny. All right. Have a fantastic day. Uh, if you would like to learn more about Fluent for Life or Frederick, you can click on the links in the description below this video. But get out. Remember, 
Number one, it's going to be the most important thing. I really want you to get lots of examples. The whole goal is to understand the vocabulary very well so that you feel confident about speaking. Let's see. So learn 10,000 words a day till 10,000. You could speak 100% like a serpent. <laughs> yes, you could try that and see how it works. All right, have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.